Bitcoin is so different from anything we've ever seen before that it is helpful to newcomers to first show them what it is not. In doing so, we often use words that are the opposite of ones we typically use to describe things we are familiar with. Bitcoin is not like any organization that anyone has ever encountered before. Bitcoin is missing a lot of features we see in just about every organization. Bitcoin has no leader, no employees, no headquarters, no center of operations, no government, no rulers of any type, no elections, no location, no physical or intellectual property, no assets, and no money. It is not even incorporated or legally constituted in any manner anywhere on earth. Bitcoin's design rejects all these common features of organizations. Bitcoin sees these features not only as unnecessary, but as undesirable. This is because it recognizes that each is a vulnerability. Bitcoin deals with such vulnerabilities by not having them in the first place. If any of these features were in Bitcoin, it could lead to Bitcoin halting, being taken over, becoming corrupted, or being destroyed. By removing them, Bitcoin becomes unstoppable, uncontrollable, incorruptible, and indestructible. By eliminating all vulnerabilities, Bitcoin becomes invulnerable. These intentional omissions are the genius in its design which makes Bitcoin valuable and indispensable. What then is Bitcoin? If Bitcoin isn't any of these things, what then is it? Bitcoin is a mechanism organizing people and computers to make one unerasable digital document. And unerasable is also known by the fancier terms immalleable or immutable. The document it creates is a record of its own history. It can only be added to over time, not edited nor erased. The record's past is preserved beneath layer upon layer of proof of the energy used in creating it. Erasing any recent records requires so much energy as to be impractical, and erasing older ones is effectively impossible. There's even more that Bitcoin doesn't do. Bitcoin doesn't keep track of the identities of the people or the machines that use it. This makes it permissionless. It doesn't increase the supply of Bitcoins to meet demand, making it deflationary and inviolate. It doesn't force itself on anyone, making it consensual. It doesn't exclude anyone from using it, making it inclusive. Bitcoin sets out to do one thing and one thing only to be the best money that humankind has ever had and will ever have, and it is uncompromising in its singular mission. In being this, Bitcoin makes possible a much brighter future for humankind and the earth. And there's, that's the end of the article. There's a few links to other stories that elaborate on some of many of these words and points uh, in the article if people go to it, all of which are like these other three minute articles. But um, I find it really, really helpful to start when I teach courses on Bitcoin. I start with this article and I start with these ideas like clean your mind of all the assumptions. People start with thinking, well, it's a company or it has shares in it or it has a must have a leader. Or it must have a head office or somebody I can talk to. And it's like it's so original and so unique. There is no employee of Bitcoin. If you screw up. If you don't like it, there's nobody, there's no complaints department, there's no customer service department, there's no marketing department.